Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Dr. Usman Akhtar and welcome to my YouTube channel. So as we were discussing about the cardiomyopathies, the first and important one, which is a most common type of cardiomyopathy is dilated cardiomyopathy. It is basically the dilatation of the all cardiac chambers, specifically the ventricles. Because of that, there will be systolic dysfunction. And because of the systolic dysfunction, there will be congestion, which is called congestive heart failure. So first, the, the most important uh, pathogenesis, or I should say the condition which is responsible for the all symptoms is congestive heart failure. So the main problem is congestive heart failure, which, which really uh, uh, damage the patient condition or patient lifestyle. This congestive cardiac uh, congestive failure is because of the systolic dysfunction as well as because whenever the heart gets dilated, so for example, this is atrium and this is ventricle. So there will be tricuspid valve and mitral valve. As the, these uh, cardiac chamber become wider, so the competency of the tricuspid wall and mitral wall they become very loose so there is uh, regurgitation of the blood so it will lead to the uh, tricuspid regurgitation and mitral regurgitation so it will uh, uh, allow the um, backflow of the blood which further uh, worsen the condition of the congestive heart failure so in dilated cardiomyopathy the main pathogenesis is of course the dilatation of four chambers but because of the systolic dysfunction and the tricuspid regurgitation and mitral regurgitation there will be congestive heart failure if we look at to the causes most of the care ca causes are uh, idiopathic we don't know the reason but the gen the uh, genetic causes is very important up to 20 to 30, 20 to 50 percent of the dilated cardiomyopathy are uh, hereditary and most of the cases more than 40 known gene is found to, found to be uh, mutant which are responsible for the production of the cytoskeleton of the myocardium so if there is the uh, mutation in the gene so there will be abnormal production of the cytoskeleton so there will be abnormal cytoskeleton in the myocardium so there will be uh, abnormal myocardium which will lead to dilated cardiomyopathy another is viral uh, myocarditis the most important one is coxsackie b virus and enterococcus virus drug related like doxorubicin which is a uh, highly cardiotoxic drug that that uh, is well known uh, or another is adriamycin alcohol abuse alcohol abuse can also lead to the uh, dilated cardiomyopathy spe specifically chronic alcoholic abuse another is chronic uh, cocaine use so if the patient the patient is young and he came with heart disease specifically MIs so never uh, forget the history of cocaine because cocaine can severely uh, damage the heart parasitic infection there is trypensoma cruzi which will, which causes the chakas disease another is pregnancy related it is also called peripartum cardiomyopathy So either the in the late uh, stages of pregnancy, last late weeks of um, pregnancy gestation, or after the few weeks of uh, delivery, the pregnant lady start to develop dilated cardiomyopathy. So it is called peripartum cardiomyopathy, and the uh, etiology is multifactorial. There is so many things which involve, like for example the hypervolumia is involved which is 
the the pregnancy is a hypervolemic condition the gestation and hypertension is can be responsible so there is multifactorial uh, uh, disease where the per, the peripartum cardiomyopathy which lead to dilated cardiomyopathy now how we will diagnose it so if there is progressive congestive heart failure if there is symptoms of the congestive heart failure this congestive heart failure we will discuss in upcoming videos in a uh, big detail so we will discuss it there so if there is progressive uh, congestive heart failure and an echocardiogram there is dilatation of the chamber and there is reduced ejection fraction less than 25 percent so it's suggestive of the dilated cardiomyopathy where the main pathophysiology is systolic dysfunction how you will treat the disease so these like first we will go for the symptomatic or we can say conservative treatment and the conservative treatment is a ce inhibitor which will uh, decrease the load of uh, uh, load over the heart so the congestion con the congestion can be reduced another is uh, diuretics which will again uh, com comfort the patient by reducing the um, uh, I should say the fluid level in the blood or I should say congestion. Digitalis it is ionotropic agent so it will increase the systolic function of the heart and anticoagulant as the blood stays uh, in the heart or the blood vessel the major blood vessel so there is high chances of the thromboembolism so we should regularly give the anticoagulant and the treatment of choice is heart transplantation which is really like i should say a very theoretical thing but still the heart transplantation heart can never be transplanted alone it can it should be transplanted along with the uh, lung so which is called cardiopulmonary transplantation so theoretically but yeah it heart transplantation is the treatment of choice in the dilated cardiomyopathies